watch the tennis ball falling on the ground or watch a tennis ball being hit by a tennis racket. Focus it again. Focus on the complete distortion of the tennis ball when it touches the ground. Can you see that? Focus on the animation again, guys. Watch the tennis ball getting completely demorphed, completely distorted, completely deformed when it's touching the ground. Right? The ball looks completely, absolute papa like them. Right? For a moment. And then what happens? It becomes a ball again. So ball, papa, ball again. We don't talk about the ball initially. I want to talk about the papa at the ball later. What I mean to say is, the word is restitution. Restitution is a fancy word for damage control. How do you restitute something? How do you save something? From a deformation, how much have you come out unscathed? From a deformation, from a bad event, from a destructive event, how much have you come out unharmed? Technically, that is restitution. What am I using the word restitution here in the sense for? Restitution here for me is damage control post-collision. That means what happened before collision, what happened after collision, if I compare them, I have got two phenomena, deformation and reformation. And if I take the ratio, if I take the ratio of impulse of reformation and impulse of deformation of the body involved in collision, we call it coefficient of restitution. Sir, just now you said elastic, inelastic, perfect, inelastic. Now you're talking about coefficient of restitution. Why? Patience. Patience. But I, I could show you the basketball bouncing. I could show you the football bouncing, stopping. I could show you the bowling ba ball falling, splat. I could show you. I couldn't explain it to you. I need a tool. I need something to explain to you what is happening and what is the difference. For that, I need your attention on coefficient of restitution. Coefficient of restitution is damage control upon damage. My question to you, can damage control be more than damage? Is it possible that the ball which is there can become even a bigger ball? No, right? That means, do you agree that the coefficient of restitution has to be less than 1? Fair enough. Do you also agree that the damage control can worst be what? 0. In real world, this inequality is like that. Strict inequality in real world between 0 and 1. There is nothing 0 in the real world. There is nothing one in the real world. Why? Because even your tennis ball wears out, right? After every five game in a set, they change the balls, right? Why do they change the ball? Because those threads are gone. The ball is damaged. So yes, I have used tennis ball as an example for complete reformation. But hmm, it's not exactly. But if I consider ideal world, then then how about I consider and make it into three cases. How about I say E could be 0, E could be between 0 and 1 or E could be 1. Can you see three cases building up? You guessed it right. What is the first case? Complete reformation. What is the last case? Complete destruction. What is the middle case? Somewhere in between. Let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Mathematically. Mathematically, what it has to do with it? What has coefficient of restitution to do with mathematically? Now, here comes Mr. Newton. I think this is the most intuitive, brilliant, brilliant laws which Newton's have, Newton has given. Okay? What he proposed was, look at the velocity of approach before the impact. Let's consider the most simple case. What's the most simple case? Consider two particles involved in a head-on collision. They approach each other. Yes, sir. And then they separate. Another word for separate? Another word of separate? Recede away. So they approach and they recede. Think about it. Let's think like Newton. Right? Let's, let's make the apple fall. Mm -hmm. What do you think? 
what do you think the collisions nature will be if they approach with way too high velocity unfortunately if two uh, two cars are in collision and they approach with very high velocity your prediction collision will be disastrous or collision will be meh, disastrous right okay so intuitively you do agree that the damage in the collision has something to do with how fast they approach each other do you realize i did use the word move i didn't say move i didn't say how high their velocity is insufficient who cares how high their velocity is if a particle goes here with 10 meter per second another one follows with 8 meter per second they have sufficiently high velocity but they will never meet high velocity is not my business approach is my business so you do agree that the quanta of collision will get affected with how fast they approach each other right right sir do you also agree that it also affects how they separate from each other right in other words deformation and reformation can be intuitively related deformation and reformation together can be intuitively related to how fast they approach before collision and how fast they separate after collision and that is the brilliance of newton's laws what he did was he broke down the collision into three parts contrary to two parts break it down into three parts what are three parts before after and during believe me if you see a very ultra slow motion a shot maybe nadal is hitting a ball tennis ball with his with his top spin forearm uh, forehand the ball will look like a laddu that to a smashed laddu you would be able to recognize if i take a if i take a picture of the ball when nadal is hitting it and i and i ask you what is he hitting you won't say it's a ball but then if you see a photo before that it's a ball if you saw see a photo after that it's a ball so how about i focus on during part so what happens in during part during part there is a stage there is a stage now can you see the pink ball is u1 the green ball is u2 clearly obviously the collision will happen if u u1 is more than u2 i understand that fine the collision happens after collision they both have their velocities v1 and v2 get it come to the during collision part what happens in during collision the during collision also is a range of time for half the time what happens now watch this hmm two balls okay picture this picture 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 two balls during collision now what uh, before collision during collision distort demorph again go back watch it again before collision before 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 both are still hands both are still balls during splat unrecognizable papad then unpapad become ball again go away do you get it there is a stage in between collision called maximum deformation what is the maximum deformation maximum deformation is the state when it just stops deforming and starts reforming again at that time they behave like one system at that time they have the same velocity v just for an instant can you see before u1 u2 yes can you see after v1 v2 i am saying appreciate the during there is a state of maximum deformation during collision when they have same velocity for an instant again no math right now okay newton observed this that's why the restitution word has come about and the newton said hey let me give you another law the law says that the coefficient of restitution e e which is equal to jr by jd it is also equal to the ratio of the separation velocity upon the approach velocity he drew a proportionality he drew a similarity he drew an empirical familiarity between
between two phenomena. He said, damage control upon damage is same as after velocity, after and upon before. Okay. Deformation. D for deformation, D for damage. Damage is proportional to how fast they approach each other. And then reformation will be proportional to how they separate after collision. He said these ratios are equal. He said the impulse of reformation upon deformation will have the same ratio as separation velocity upon approach velocity. So guys, now the first math part. Tell me, for the picture, the example I have shown you, what is the fancy way of saying that? With reference to context, can you please tell me in the diagram given, what is E equal to? Come on, I taught you relative velocity. In the diagram given below, what is E equal to? Can you please tell me, what is the velocity of separation? Velocity of separation is the relative velocity along the line joining them when they are separating. V2 minus V1. Good. What is the velocity of approach? So for separation, always look after the collision. For separation, always look for after the collision. Approach. Before. Come on. U2 minus... Wrong. Wrong. U1 minus U2. 